Welcome back. We are getting plugged into your health this morning. Specifically, we're talking about children's health issues. We all want what's best for our children, right? Well, the CDC says children need the right amount of sleep at night to help them stay focused, improve concentration, and improve academic performance. So how much is the right amount? Joining me now with the answer and more is sleep psychologist at Children's Health and assistant professor at UT Southwestern, Dr. David Brown. Good morning. Good Thank, morning. You. Thank you. So how important is sleep to a child's health overall? Um, sleep is important to all of us, mm -hmm. but it is critically important for children. Charles Seisler at Harvard said that the three most important factors uh, contributing to optimal health and performance are diet, exercise, and sleep. Mm -hmm. We now have actually taken a step further that sleep is foundational because it affects everything we try to do in our lives. It does affect our health, attention, concentration, memory, mood. It increases if you're not getting enough sleep, you're going to have school poor, poor school performance, mm -hmm. uh, increased risk of accidents and injury, so it really does affect everything. I know that you know the the diet is important, exercise, and for a lot of people, they're they're consciously trying to do something with their children. But sleep sometimes kind of goes by the wayside. We, we tend not to, to emphasize that as much. I would agree. So, how many hours of sleep do children need? Does it vary by age? It definitely varies by age. For example, infants can sleep anywhere from 12 to 16 hours a day. Uh, as we get older, the amount of sleep we need decreases to some degree, but even by the teenage years, uh, teenagers need eight to ten hours of sleep per night. And there are very few teenagers that are consistently getting that much sleep per night. Mm -hmm. Now the other thing to keep in mind is that it varies by age, but also it varies between children. So an infant needing 12 to 16 hours. You know, a perfectly normal infant may get 12 hours a day, a perfectly normal infant may need 16 per day. So that alone is not an indication of a problem. So if your teenager is only getting six hours of sleep a night or... That's too little. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got that argument with mine all the time. But. So the, <laughs> the recommendation now is at least seven hours of sleep per night mm -hmm. uh, at almost every age group. Right, and again, what are, uh, what can happen if they don't get the right amount of sleep? What are some of the repercussions? Well, if you don't get enough sleep, it definitely affects attention, concentration, memory. It uh, affects your immune system. Uh, insufficient sleep is a huge contributing factor to the epidemic of childhood obesity that we're now experiencing. Uh, it causes behavioral issues. I mean, you may know that when you have a poor night of sleep, you're pretty irritable and mm -hmm. grumpy. Well, that's tenfold in our children, that mm -hmm. without enough sleep, they become hyperactive, they become irritable, they have behavior issues. Um, it, it really affects everything. Mm -hmm. We tell our kids, in order to grow big and strong, you need to get plenty of sleep at night. And there is truth to that, because mm -hmm. growth hormone is released during stage three sleep at night. Mm -hmm. So I always tell kids, if you want to run faster, jump higher, be smarter get plenty of sleep. It's so hard, especially when a lot of them come home with piles and piles and piles of yeah, homework and they're trying hard to get into college and yeah, it can be very um, frustrating. So what, what can parents do to help children unwind before getting ready for bed? What is the best technique if there is a single best technique? Well, the, the best technique is be consistent mm -hmm. and you need to have a very good bedtime, particularly for young children, a good bedtime routine. You know, bedtime for kids is a lot like time out. They're losing access to their parents, to their toys, to their electronics. And so you need to... It's like a punishment, you know, for a lot of kids. You seems know? to be. Yeah. So the good bedtime routine will make it less of a punishment. Should be short and sweet and a clear indication to the child that it's bedtime. So the type of play starts to slow down from yelling and running to reading or coloring. Uh, a good bedtime routine would be 20 to 30 minutes, bath, brush your teeth, put on your pajamas, in bed, read one book, two books, a uh, little cuddle time, but then the parent gets out of bed and leaves the room. That would be ideal. Okay. Um, and I like the cuddle time and I like the books because it makes it less uh, punitive that they're right. going to bed at night. Right. And a good routine is also not negotiable, meaning kids are going to find a hundred reasons why they don't need to go to bed right now, 
but you need to be pretty firm with that. What about weekends when they come into play? I mean, because I know that, well, we would let our kids stay up a little bit later on the weekends and, mm -hmm. and, and maybe sleep in a little bit longer. It, does that mess with their routines? It I does. Mean, their sleep and cycle? I'm, I'm constantly amazed how many parents I see that have a wonderful mm -hmm. sleep schedule on school nights, but no schedule whatsoever on weekends mm -hmm. or holidays. And the problem with that is uh, you will eventually change your internal clock. Mm -hmm. Over the course of a single summer, staying up late, sleeping late, mm -hmm. you're putting yourself in a different time zone. Right. I do think it's okay to have some more flexibility on weekends. Keep it reasonable. One or two hours difference mm -hmm. should be maintained weekends and holidays. That's great advice. Thank you so much. And coming up, we all know that high school football in Texas is a big deal, but what if your child gets a concussion? Would you be able to spot it? And should you pull them from the game? We're talking about how to keep your teenage athlete safe next. Plus, how do you tell when your child's sadness and anxiety are more than just regular growing pains? We're discussing ch children's mental health issues later in the show. Please stay with us.